Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today. Uh, today I actually have Megan Mark here and we are talking about the Riverside Project. The Riverside Project is an organization that seeks to transform the foster care system here in the Houston area. So I wanted to, one, learn more about the organization, but also show you what ways you can choose to be involved if you decide that you wanna be a part of this transformation. How long have you been involved in it? Where did kind of the idea come from? I was actually involved with the Riverside Project in its infancy. Okay. I was in introduced to Amber Knowles, our founder and executive director, and she kindly sat with me over coffee every couple weeks for several weeks and told me what it looked like for her family to foster, how it was hard, how it was good, how her community stepped up to help her. And she also shared some of the gaps that she saw in the foster care system. We talked through some of the gaps that we saw in the system and she had a few ideas for how we could get involved, how we could help and she invited me along. So I was the first volunteer. We started uh, the first program, our Babysitting Collaborative, which is still growing strong today. It has grown significantly from there. How do people plug themselves in? What are the ways that they can help? We usually start with just asking them to get connected to us. Mainly, we want them to understand what we consider the river. Um, hence the name, The Riverside Project. Okay. And that's basically where uh, if you consider the foster care system along um, the Riverside, um, it would probably be in the middle. Upstream, you would find social issues such as addiction, incarceration, crisis pregnancy, poverty, generational poverty. Some of the causes that lead to fostering. These foster are the care. really complicated social issues that typically lead children and their families into the foster care system. Okay. If a child and a family is not reunified um, in a healthy way, if a child is not connected to a loving and stable home, um, either through foster care, adoption, or reunification, um, the likelihood that that child will experience incarceration themselves, crisis pregnancy, addiction, trafficking, being a part of a gang, um, it's, it's significant mm. and that cycle perpetuates. Um, and so yeah. what we invite Houstonians into is to find their place along the river. Is that fostering themselves? Is that mentoring youth who are aging out of the foster care system? Is that volunteering in group homes? Is it mentoring teen moms? Is it volunteering within schools? Is it meeting needs of vulnerable families in their community? Um, all these things stabilize people, they stabilize families. Mm. And ultimately that's what's gonna transform the foster care system. Where do they go to kind of figure out what the needs are and how can they figure out which place works best for them to be able to fit in? If you know someone in your community that's fostering um, or maybe a kinship family, maybe grandma who's caring for grandchildren okay. um, and you want to help, you can become certified. They're a very, very streamlined, easy process okay. that is accepted by 27 child placing agencies, including the state of Texas. Wow. The second thing that you could do is you could be a part of our response network. And that is a collection of churches, businesses, and passionate individuals who want to meet the tangible needs of vulnerable families in their zip code. We have a really great relationship with the Department of Family and Protective Services. Okay. Um, we might get a call from one of their caseworkers that says this family seems to be a bit vulnerable or this grandma just received the care of her grandchildren. Um, and they need help um, either making ends meet in some capacity or just preparing them um, for this journey that they're gonna go on. Right. So it might look like they need a couple twin beds, a couple mattresses and some sheets. And so we have a really thorough process where we assess the immediate needs, but also long-term needs. We ask individuals and churches and businesses within that family zip code to meet those tangible immediate needs and quickly. That helps stabilize that family. And then that occurs while we work on other ways that we can assess them. Right. Um, so then you start thinking about, okay, if grandma took on um, care for her grandchildren, how are they doing in school? Are they adjusting to a new school? Um, do they need tutoring services? Mm. Do they have plans for the summer? Does she have childcare? How is this grocery bill gonna affect their overall budget of their family? Right. Um, and so we partner with other nonprofits throughout the area to make sure that those questions are answered and that this family is set up to thrive. I think the fact that you guys are not just saying, hey, let's just throw a lot of money at the foster care system and hope that it works itself out. Actually being able to say, what ways can we plug in to, to stop the flow of people entering into it? And if they are in it, 
how do we keep that cycle from perpetuating itself and get yeah. people out of that? What would be the best way for people to, one, reach out, or two, is there a, a way that they can receive more information about ways that they can help or more information about Riverside Project in general? I would recommend going to riversideproject.org and filling out a connect form um, that it's at the bottom of our homepage. You can also reach out to me at any time. My whole job is helping people use their very unique skills and resources to be a part of the work that we do. I would also recommend following us, of course, on Instagram and Facebook. Our Instagram handle is the.riverside.project okay. and then um, Facebook, I believe, is Riverside Project. Dot .htx. Got it. Um, both of those are linked on our website. Finally, I would say find our podcast wherever you enjoy podcasts. It's all about finding your place along the river and highlighting Houstonians who have done that. That could be church members who are involved in a foster care ministry. It has been um, representatives from Texas Children's Hospital, group home staff members. It's a deep dive into conversations with people who have found their place and hopefully it will help other people find their place as well. My encouragement is today to go check out the Riverside Project to see what ways you can help, figure out how you can be a part of transforming the foster care system here in Houston. Any of you guys out there who are my clients, every single transaction that I do, we're actually partnering with the Riverside Project to donate a portion of my commission to their organization to help aid uh, and helping more families get the help and the resources that they need. Just by being associated with me, you are also uh, being associated with the Riverside Project and the great work that they're doing. If you want to learn a little bit more about what they do and you want to watch one of their most recent podcast episodes, episodes, you can actually click to watch this video right here and get a little bit more information. And if you're thinking about moving to the Houston area and you want to learn whether you should be focused on living in town or living in the suburbs, you can click to watch this video right here to learn a little bit more about that. Thank you guys so much for watching to the end of the video and we'll see you guys on the next one.